my name is Nigel. I'm your presenter for the day. Welcome to the Sunshine Courses Accounting module. This one is on computer accounting configurations. And the idea of this uh, session is to show you how to configure your accounting software so that you can start using it. And we're gonna hold the session be a practical one where I'm gonna show you an example of how you configure a system. Um, and we're gonna run through how you configure the system with your organization details, how to set up a chart of accounts. Charts of accounts are the accounting system that you want and the, the names and the types of accounts a category, accounting categories that you're gonna to want to report on, how you set up your sales and customers, your purchases and suppliers. We're gonna to touch briefly on how you set up uh, the tax configurations so that the software, if it's geared up for it, can manage the taxes for you. And then we're gonna to touch on a couple of other um, uh, configurations just to give you a flavor of how powerful these things can be. So we're gonna go straight to the um, uh, KPM accounting system. This is just an example of a, an accounting system. It's very typical, there are lots of other ones. Each accounting system has got its own way of doing things, but KPM is just a, a typical example. And uh, you'll notice on in KPM the uh, menu items are on the left, but in different systems you'll find them in different places, some of them at the top, some of them at the right. Some of them have individual buttons that you can press. And with KPM, the first place I'm going to set up is the organization details. In the left-hand menu at the bottom, there's something called settings. On a lot of systems, you'll have a little gear icon that you can click, and that's where you'll find your settings. And you click on settings, and there's some sub menu, some items. And one of them, for example, is um, one of the settings is company information, one is accounting periods. I'm going, to go, I'm going to go straight for the company information. This is exactly what you would expect for the company uh, or organization information. It's what type of organization are you? Are you a sole trader, a partnership, limited liability? Um, if you're not sure, ask the client that you're working with and ask them to ask their accountants if they're not sure. But usually that's pretty easy to configure. The name of the business, the address, phone number, web, uh, email, website. It's worth putting all these in because this detail often appears in invoices and other places, and it's quite useful to have it all in one place. If you're a limited company, you need to put the company registered number, and there's various other bits of details that you can put through. For example, what's the standard currency, the business start date, the year end. Year end's an important one. If you're in the states and a number of countries, most people, most, most countries have a year end of 31st of December. But in the UK, we've got some very strange accounting periods and most businesses have the year end as the 31st of March. Um, and you can set up things like, are you uh, on your VAT scheme? Are you accruals or a cash-based system? So if you just click on the edit button, you can make all your changes through here. Um, one of the options, for example, you, on the drop down menu, you can say if you're a sole trader or something else, as it happens um, in KPM, this information is managed at an administrative level. So I can't enter this, I can't enter this myself, but, um, uh, but in most accounting systems, you can enter it yourself. In KPM, I'd have to ask the administrator to update this for me. Well, typically the administrator has set this up for me in the first place. So the company settings, um, uh, uh, you need to set up. Similarly with accounting periods, um, uh, you've got the option of deciding which accounting periods you want to show. Um, again, I'm not gonna to spend too much time on this, uh, it should be fairly straightforward. If you want to show a prior accounting period, um, you need to put in the periods for which you want to show. And this is useful, for example, if you want to show, um, sometimes you want to show annual accounts, but sometimes you want to do quarterly accounts. So the accounting periods allow you to set which accounting um, period you want to relate to. Um, the general settings, 
allows you, for example, to add different currencies. If for some reason you want to add, um, uh, if you're an English company, but you want to add American dollars, um, you'll click and save it and you can add a currency. Let me add the, the UK currency because um, I want to add the UK currency, uh, GB, GB, oh. it looks to me like the pound is, is defaulted, um, British pounds. Okay, well, I can't find it, but um, you need, uh, my, my guess is that this is an English system, so the, it's automatically defaulted that the pound is in there. But if you want to have some other currencies, you can incorporate them here. Um, so that's the organization details. The next thing you want to set up once you set up the organization is the chart of accounts. The chart of accounts are the accounting names that you've got. And these are the accounts or the categories that you want to use in your accounting. So if the, organ if the accounting software already has the standard accounting um, accounts that you want to use and you don't need to add anything else, you won't need to, um, to go and change this at all. But if you're a particular business and you've got particular types of sales or costs or um, costs of sales that you want to account for which are specific to your business, you may well want to go into the chart of accounts to add new accounts. So in the example of um, Sunshine Traders, we added vehicle sales and programming income. So the default um, account was sales, but because we're a particular business and we had particular vehicle sales, we had programming income and hosting services and donations received. All of these, we added ourselves. But before we add any accounts, I just want to draw your attention to something that most accounting systems um, have this in common, which is the accounts fall within subcategories of accounts and you have the subcategories which are set up for statutory purposes. So when you uh, are recording a, a account, you have to show turnover. If you're a charity, that's slightly different, but in almost all other organizations, the statutory requirement is you have to show turnover. Turnover is another word for sales. And that's a category you have to disclose in your accounts. And so what the accounting systems do is they allow you to add your own personalized accounts within the categories. And in KPM, you've actually got two layers of categories. There's the higher level of category. In this case, it's turnover, cost of sales, selling and distribution costs, administrative expenses, and there's two or three others. These are the statutory requirements that are listed in, in the UK Companies Act law that you have to include in your accounts. But in KPM, it's got an additional level of categories, which can be subcategories of the groups. So there's a whole categories of turnover and the turnover categories and the turnover group are just one and the same thing. But when it comes to cost of sales, you can have a category that's called opening stock, a second category that's called purchases, this is all within cost of sales. And then another category, which is staff costs and other direct costs. And as I was saying, within cost of sales, you might have different types of categories. Um, for example, purchases and staff costs. Um, if you're a trading entity, you're gonna be buying goods and services. Those will go in the subcategory of purchases. But if you're a service company, you're much more likely to have staff costs as direct cost of sales than purchases. You can often have both, but KPM allows you to distinguish them. And if you want to see all of the accounts in KPM, you simply list, um, click the drop down list of all accounts. But what you can do in KPM is you can look up subgroups. So you can, for example, look up just purchases within the subgroup of cost of sales. So if I click purchases and the cost of sales, the account categories that we set up, KPM had sent its own 
category of purchases, but we add another category of vehicle purchases ourselves. And if I wanted to add yet another purchases, which is in the subcategory of cost of sales, I click on the category I want to add to and click on the account. When I click on uh, the account, um, the first thing I have to enter is the, the account type. So in this case, I'm going to add, it's within the subcategory of purchases, which is within cost of sales, I'm going to add purchases. I'm going to add an account name. This time I'm going to call it not vehicle purchases, but let's say I've got call it computer purchases. Let's say I'm going to start trading in, com in computers where I buy computers and sell them. So I might, I might want a new category. KPM has already set up an account code for me. I could have set up my own one if I wanted to do so. If I set up an account code that was already exist, it will tell me that it exists um, and will stop me doing so. So I know, for example, that 1210 already exists. If I try and overwrite it, it tells me that a duplicate ca code exists. But if I put a new code, 12120, um, one, which I think is a new code, yep, it allows me to add it. That's wonderful. I don't know if you noticed, I'm just going to go back and edit this. One of the options it has when I edit it is whether it's, it's active or not. So if I want to delete a code, I can simply make it inactive and save it. So some accounting systems to delete them, I have to make them inactive. Others, I can actually delete with a drop-down code. The other thing I wanted you to notice, and we'll talk about later, is the VAT code, that certain purchases and sales automatically have a VAT code. Now, this is only appropriate for you if you're VAT registered. If you're not VAT registered, you don't really care. But if you are VAT registered, it's important. You can put a default VAT code, which is useful for when you're entering accounts at a later stage. So we can set up the chart of accounts and the type of accounts we can set up are turnover or cost of sales. And there's various subcategories. We can quite a lot of subcategories of cost of sales, stock purchases, staff cost appreciation, various fixed assets, research and development. All of those are cost of sales. Then there's selling and distribution costs. So these are costs, these are the costs that you incur in order to sell things, such as marketing, staff costs, fixed assets. Then there's various administrative expenses. Again, staff costs, professional fees, premises costs. So depending on what you're trying to include in the categories, remember the categories are you, you to choose from to decide what best serves the management so they can understand how to run their business. Once you've decided, you set up the categories, you choose the categories, choose which subcategory it falls into. And then for example, if we wanted to add a particular type of staff costs, we'll click administrative expensive staff costs. We've got one wages and salaries, one PAY and that's insurance. If for example, we started paying pensions, I could well imagine we want to add pensions in staff costs. So I could well imagine I clicked on the plus account, I choose an, uh, an account type of administrative expensive staff costs, and here I can put pensions uh, or other staff benefits. Um, uh, if I had four or five different types of staff benefits, and if they were significant enough, I might list each separately or I might say pensions and other staff benefits, or I might just say staff benefits, depending on what I want to achieve. In this case, KPM has already chosen an account code for me, which will fit neatly, but I can very happily add my own if I prefer to do so. The importance of the account code is that when KPM does its reporting, it reports the accounts in numerical order within the subcategory. So if you want the accounts to appear in a particular order, the way you can do so is by uh, adjusting the account code. Different accounting systems have their own way of doing it. In this case, there's no VAT on it and it's an active account. So I'm going to save that. And this now appears uh, in pensions. Within KPM, you can see there's different colors, wages and salaries and employee and PAY and national insurance. Um, if, 
KPM has set up, its, if the accounting software has set up accounts in order to comply with various statutory or tax requirements, you won't be able to change them. But if you set up your own accounts, you will be able to change them. Except if you've got entries already in pensions, most accounting systems will prevent you changing those accounts once you've got entries in it. So it was just a warning. If you want to put in accounts, it's very flexible. All accounting, by and large, accounting systems are very flexible for you to be able to enter charts of accounts or new accounts. The very inexpensive or free systems sometimes don't allow you to enter that, but most of them do. And you've got a lot of flexibility. Um, and if you can put them within the group, the right group, and within the right category, that's how you can control where it, will, where it will appear in your profit and loss account or your balance sheet. So that's the chart of accounts. And for example, if you've got directors or owners have lent money to the business, it's very common to set up a, a liability um, uh, of money owing to um, owners, particularly if there's two or three owners have lent money which they want repaid, where you'll set up a separate account for each owner. Just occasionally an owner will draw money out of the business, which they owe back to the business. There's a lot of law that makes that illegal, but still, if that happens, you may well want to highlight that, not to be unpleasant, but just to draw attention to the fact you've got an illegal loan so that you can do something about it. And again, it's very often that you'll put in, for example, a current asset of the debtor's, uh, debtor's loan, um, and you, you'll create that and you usually create a separate one for each director so that you can ask the director to repay the money as quickly as they can. Um, remember that the accounting system is designed to help you manage the business. So if you want to set up accounts in order to highlight key aspects of the business, such as illegal loans um, or particular types of income or expenses, you've got the option to do so. And setting up the chart of accounts is how you create new accounts in order to highlight stuff. Okay, let's now go on to sales. There are two or three configurations we need for sales. The first one is usually we have to configure the sales invoice. The sales invoice that's created by an accounting system will look how it's set up to look. And different accounting systems allow you to configure the invoices in different ways. Um, some of them have got uh, um, pages that you can go into and it allows you to put up your logo. It allows you to configure what text you've got at different places in the invoice. Um, so more sophisticated systems give you much more flexibility. In the case of um, KPM, um, just trying to remember where it is that we set up the, uh, uh, in KPM you go to settings, there's a sub section of general settings and there's a setting there for invoice templates. And in the invoice templates, it tells you which files it picks up the template from. So there's a description of how you adjust the template as it happens in KPM. You've got the option to download the templates. When you do so, these four documents will appear on your hard disk. You can then put through the changes you want to. For example, you can put in a logo, you can put text in there. If you want text, for example, on an invoice, I quite like to put on every invoice, please make payments payable to such and such a bank account with this sort code, this account number. Um, because I want it to appear on every invoice, I actually update the template. So you, the way you do it, you download the template to your local disk, put through the changes, save it. Once you've saved it, come back to upload, and it allows you to choose the file, or select the file and click, click upload. So that's how you adjust the invoice template to make it look like you want to in KPM. This is a bit more fiddly. Other systems are a lot more straightforward um, for updating the um, template, but uh, the look of the invoice, but they're less sophisticated. So that's how you update the invoice layout. And that's one of the first things you'll want to do in most accounting systems. Once you've done that, the next thing you want to set up is your, uh, your um, 
customers. And in some accounting systems, if you click on sales, you'll find the ability to enter new customers is listed down here as a sub item. But in KPM, there's a separate section called contacts. And in this case, you can add customers or suppliers. So if I click customers, I've already entered two customers. The way I can enter a customer is simply click plus customer and then enter exactly the normal information you would expect, their name, address. The reason for entering this information is this will appear in an invoice and you'll find it's much easier if you enter it here in one place. If you put the email, phone number and various notes, particularly banking information, it allows you to do quite a lot of things. Um, if they're VAT registered, put their VAT registered number down, because again, for VAT, if you're VAT registered yourself, there are certain circumstances it's useful to have their VAT registered number. And if you need to, um, if you're setting up a, an accounting system that, that is already operative, and when you set this up, there's already an amount due to you, you can put in here what the opening balance is as at the time you set this up. And when you click save, that will simply appear as a customer. What that means is when you then go to raise an invoice, if I put in a new invoice, that customer will now appear in the drop down list. In some accounting systems, you have to enter the uh, have to enter the suppliers beforehand uh, in order to be able to pick them for the drop down list. But in KPM, you can click the uh, click a plus button beside the customer name and it will take you to the customer details. You can enter the details here. Notice you can only enter some of the details, not all of them. For example, I can't add their VAT registered number, but I can enter generally the information that's quite useful. And once I save it, it will then I can then um, let it appear in my, uh, in my invoice template and I can go through and enter my details um, as, uh, as per normal. And then the final thing that you want to enter for invoices is what is it that you sell? So you generally want to put um, enter, enter this in before you start. Um, although again with KPM, you can enter it as you're going, but some, some systems you can't. So in KPM, it's called sales items. Um, in others, it might be called products, for example. But the idea is that you list each of the items you sell, whether it's goods or services, in this case, server hosting is a service, but selling tractors is a, is a goods, software coding is services, it doesn't really matter. But if you want to add a new item, you enter the item that you're selling. If you want to add your own code, you can do so. Um, some organizations like to do that. We're gonna explain how you enter the VAT code later, but once you enter the VAT code, um, if you want to put the default VAT rates that you need to charge, for example, if this is a standard VAT item, for if you're VAT registered, most organizations will be standard. Um, mo sorry, most products will be standard, um, but it allows you the flexibility to change it. There's a few items that are uh, sell at different rates. For example, there's a reduced rate of 5%, and a few items sell at 5%. So if you don't know what, uh, you should, what VAT rate you should be charging, ask the management or the external accountants, and they'll make sure you know which VAT rates to charge. But generally in the UK, you'll be charging standard rates of 20% if you're VAT registered. Of course, if you're not VAT registered, you can leave this as zero, um, exempt, for example, or no VAT. Um, so type the name, for example, tractor, V96, you could type a code if you want to. You can type a description which will appear in the invoice, which is useful if the item name is not descriptive enough for customers to know. Now you can update the description generally when you're raising an invoice, but this is quite useful if you want a better description than simply the item name. And just occasionally it's useful. So if, for example, we were doing server hosting, let's just edit this one. Um, I've actually put a description, monthly server, server hosting charges. It could be, I could say annual service, annual server hosting charges, as opposed to monthly server hosting charges. Um, so the idea of description is to add enough inf additional information without having 
to put each long description in the item name if you want to do so. But then the next thing you can add in is the price. Now the price might be price per item or price per hour. It's whatever you choose the price to be. Um, and there's various items, uh, options. If you're managing stock, there's various options for you to be able to enter details here. You'll notice I put a reduced rate of 5%. As it happens, server hosting in the UK is at 20%. So I've just corrected that. And if I save that, um, I've now got my server hosting has been configured. And if I wanted to add new items, they would have appeared here. And once I've added my items or products, I then go to enter a new invoice. Those products are now available for me to enter in the, um, I enter my main details of uh, the name of the customer, um, the reference number, the currency. Do you remember we put in the dollars? So I could put in dollars if I wanted to do so, even with an exchange rate, but no, I'm going to put sterling. Some accounting systems do have currency, ma managed currency, some don't. Um, but once I put my generic information, I could again put notes if I want to. I could say here, payment within 30 days. I could equally have put that in my template if I wanted to do so. But here, this item, if I now want to put some, um, uh, to add a new item to my invoice, I can select from the drop down list. And here I put in the server hosting. And it's already put a description of monthly server hosting charges for me, which I could update if I wanted to do so. So I've made this, um, I've tailored this. So the description may have been enough and I can tailor it if I want to, or I could simply delete it and overwrite it if I want to. I could change the quantity. I could have two servers. And again, I might, in the, if there were two separate servers, I might put the description of company A and company B. Um, which nominal account it's going to, you can put in here uh, in the normal way we've discussed this before. But the VAT rate you'll notice now says 20%. And that's because it's defaulted to 20% because I set the item up to have a default rate of 20%, even though I can override it, that's what the default is. So that's everything you need to do to set up your sales system. Purchases works in almost identical way. Uh, you'll need to um, enter your suppliers. So you can either enter them in the suppliers section in, in KPM, and I've entered two suppliers, you could add as many as you want to, or when you're entering purchases, if you're entering a particular purchase, so I enter a new purchase, if I don't have a supplier from the drop down list, I can simply click the plus, enter the new supplier in, and that will then appear for future in the, in the list. Same thing with, um, uh, so in the KPM system, it doesn't have the same item options that you have or product options that you have in other software. In, in some items, um, that are more advanced, they would allow you to keep track of stocks on an item by item basis. So there would have been a drop down list for the item. But in this case, I would just have to type in whatever I want to, whatever I'm buying, uh, how many of them I'm buying, uh, of the um, account it goes to, and, and I sort of just into my normal, um, enter things in the normal way. Uh, I'd have to enter the VAT rate again because um, if I'm VAT registered, I, I enter it myself. And notice that the, um, the um, yeah, so the amount of, a lot of these things have automatically updated themselves because I put the amount of seven pounds, it's automatically defaulted other stuff, um, which we discussed when we were entering the, uh, how you enter um, sales and purchases in the sales and purchases module. So entering purchases is very similar to entering sales um, uh, and enter the purchase, the customers. Um, if you've got the option of entering items, again, it'll save you time when you're entering new purchases. Um, so the next thing I want to talk about is how you enter taxes and in particular, the VAT rate. So the VAT rate is probably one of the first things you want to configure if it's not configured for you already, and most systems already configure VAT correctly, 
But if I go into the VAT system, one of the options I've got is VAT settings. And the first thing it uh, in, uh, allows you to enter various details, such as am I doing an accruals based VAT or a cash based VAT, or am I not VAT registered? So I'm not VAT registered. It's worth me saying so because it saves a lot of other configuration in KPM. But in this case, I'm going to say I am registered. Um, I use the accrual space system. If you don't know the answer to any of these details, you should ask your accountants, put in your VAT registration number, which is a seven digit number. Um, and whether you submit VAT quarterly, monthly or yearly. And again, ask your accountants if you don't know what the answer to this is. In your VAT codes, KPM has already set up a lot of VAT. Um, so you don't have to do, do anything to change any of these. And the reason it's set it up is that VAT is quite complicated and KPM is set up to handle everything you need to manage VAT uh, and to do it all for you. So it's got this complication because of the complications of VAT. But if the government comes out with a new VAT code and the UK government are toying with it at the moment, you can simply enter a new VAT code. You'd say what the name of it is, what type of, um, uh, is it a normal one or is it an EU one? Um, it allows you to do an abbreviation if you want to shorten it. And here in particular, you could put the rate and the rate is the significant item because this is the way in which you can enter, enter a different sales rate so if the sales rate, we've got a 5% and 20%, but for some reason you'll now want to add a 10% or a 7% rate, the way you can do so is you enter a new code. And once you've entered the new code, that will then appear for you everywhere that you need it to appear. So although in KPM there is a separate section in VAT, in some accounting systems you'll find it in settings. Um, and if you can't find it, uh, most accounting systems will have some help system. Um, just have a look for it. Generally, you won't need it, but if you do need it, that's how you can update it. And a couple of other tax things that are quite useful to incorporate include um, are something called the UTR number. In the UK, that's Unique Taxpayer's Reference Number. This is something you get from the Inland Revenue. Again, the accountant will have set it up for you. If you don't know what it is, ask them for that number. And if you incorporate it here, it allows the tax systems, the accounting systems, to do a lot of submitting of the accounts for you or the taxes for you, if that's what you want to do. And the final thing I'm going to mention is there's a couple of other features that accounting systems ha have. Um, different systems have different features. And depending on what the feature is, you'll have to set it up or configure it before you start. Um, specific to the accounting software you've got. In KPM, they've got a section for inventory and a separate section for fixed assets. And in the inventory, I've got the options of adding new items. Um, and in the fixed assets section, it's got the options for um, uh, adding different types of assets so that I can keep track of the assets if you look at the fixed assets module, you'll see um, why you might want to keep track of fixed assets on an item by item level. In KPM, this is how you do it. The inventory system in KPM is quite primitive, I think. I may be wrong, but I think it is. And I actually don't know how you update the, um, the inventory system, um, but it looks to me like you can't keep track of running inventory. So I haven't looked into it in more detail. Um, but if this is something that's important to you, then make sure within your accounting system, you've understood what it is, you've understood how to update it. And when you're configuring the system, before you start, you want to make sure if you're using a stock system or an inventory system, that you've updated all the details. So that is the summary of how we configure an accounting system. Each system is uh, unique, each is configured in its own way, and the configuration depends on the functionality each accounting system has. But by and large, each of them have got a few items in common. Uh, one of them is you'll enter the organization details. Generally, you'll enter the chart of accounts, 
and that's how you tailor these accounts to your particular needs, will generally enter your sales and customers, purchases and uh, suppliers. Um, you may well enter something to do with uh, information about taxes. And other than that, typically what happens is if you need to configure something when you're in the middle of uh, entering transactions, if you find that there's something that's not being configured, it's actually very simple to go and configure it at that point. And then when you're done, go back and enter the transaction. If that is, you can't configure it interactively as you're entering the transaction. And different accounting systems have different ways of doing it. I hope that was helpful. Good luck with the accounting. Keep well. Bye.